Hey guys, I just pulled up on a job where I'm pretty sure they have one of those train um, comfort link zone systems and it's a no cooling call. I have no idea what's going on, so let's go in and take a look at it. Okay, um, is there is it just one vent you're having trouble with? Evidently, yes. Mm. All right. Will you show me? Uh, let me get back out of this. All right, which vent are you talking about? Okay, so the complaint is that just this one vent is not blowing. All of upstairs is on one zone, so I have a and access right here look at that I'm gonna tell her she needs to get a plumber to look at that but this is my access I do not have a lot of room right here Hmm, let's go see what we can do. Y'all see that? I keep seeing it all over the place with all the lights. Maybe it's just this one. Mm. It's hot. All right, let's see how, what's the best way to try to get up here? All right, I was seeing lights blink all over the place. Man, this customer has a home warranty. Let's watch this for just a second. So there's no telling who's been out here. I'm waiting to see if this thing's gonna try to start up because something wasn't right. <clears throat> Looks like somebody's been out here recently. All this is kind of janked up and not really on there. All right, let's see if we can find anything wrong. I'm definitely worried about that condenser. Well, I can see why it's not getting any airflow. Hmm. Forgive me. The um, code on flex was like 14 feet. That right there. It, it looks like that was some kind of add-on. I mean, that don't look like the rest of the ductwork.
Whew. All right, the rest of the duct work is hard pipe. It does look like, oh, that's not all flex. It's just flex from here to here, it looks like. Yeah, that's hard pipe. All right, so on a zone system where this is upstairs, so it's going to get the least airflow to begin with. I want to show you something on this duct work that is not done right. This right here, the end of this cap should be way out here. This right here should not be that close to the end, and really, nor should that. In most cases, that will force a majority of the air through here. As you see, that's kind of kinked right there. It could use an elbow. I'm trying to see what size pipe that is. <clears throat> Most of this flex has the size of the pipe written on it somewhere I want to say that's a six but it's hard for me to tell without looking without uh, measuring it yeah that definitely definitely looks like some kind of add-on you see how we got mastic tape on the outside here? I don't think this system was designed for this room over here. We should probably cap that off and quote them a mini split. Which I don't think would be too hard to do. All right, now I got to navigate down there and going backwards. to look at that something seems to be leaking not sure where but that's what it looks like all right I'm in that room and if y'all look down there there's like a tiny little roof edge so that would make it difficult to do a mini split on this wall but we could probably do one on this wall without much trouble. Let me look in the attic. All right, this is mm, 
that back section. Let me go on over there. And as you see, as long as that goes directly to outside and we can tap into the soffit, that right there should be pretty easy. Let's take a look outside and make sure that's a viable option. And then we get to look at that condenser. All right, so another clue that I had that that section was not meant to be part of the air conditioning system is the door that goes to that is actually in a bathroom and it has weather stripping around it. So that was meant to be like an attic storage room and it was converted into living space but um it didn't work out so well this is the eve that i was looking at to put a mini split on the air handler is under there they got a four or five ton and uh we might have to move some of these little things but Yeah, we could put us a mini split right here. An electrician wouldn't have much trouble getting us a, like a 30 amp disconnect right there. But let's go check on that condenser. We have a Mr. Slim for a, for another room that was designed the same way that's over this garage. So, um, that may be the answer for the other side of the house. All right, first we got to put a light on this so y'all can see it but look at all that oil right there <clears throat> either this or this is leaking that's that's a lot of oil let's hook up our probes to it and get an amp meter on this thing before we put power to it i've got it calling in the biggest biggest zone right now let me see how easy this is to get off One of these, oh, that looks, it looks sopping wet. And that right there feels kind of cold.
pretty sure this is going to be low on Freon, but is that why it was starting and stopping? <clears throat> Standing pressure at 179. Alright, I got that on amps. Switch it to inrush. Contactors pulled in. Oh, I had it on the wrong one. It went over the 100 amps. Don't have but one capacitor. As you see here, let me put this on 410. These pressures are very low. I got 273 head and 90 suction, which gives me a saturation temperature of 26 degrees. <clears throat> low sub cooling, 1.8 and 25 degrees superheat. So yes, it's low. All right, I just I just powered this off. I'm gonna check the capacitor because I, I suspect it's weak and do a leak search down here. I got to remove my gauges, my probes now to keep from messing my leak search up. That went all the way up to 99. So that's a bad leak, really bad, really, really bad. I'm just not picking up anything right here. It's hard to believe I got a leak that bad and I'm not picking it up just inches away. It goes to show that these leak detectors have to be right on it. All right, let's, I need to get a Schrader core and I think I have a removal tool. Let me get that core. supposed to be a 40.
nothing. So we got multiple problems. Got our capacitor replaced. Now let's work on, I think my, my valve cores are out here. Yeah, there they are. So let's work on changing that Schrader core. Help. I didn't get it. Sometimes you need to loosen this up so that the O-ring don't get in the way. Et voilà. Hmm. All right. Capacitors on. That's fixed. I just had a bee buzz my ear. He ain't gonna hurt me. All right, let's uh, see about getting this charged up. This particular home warranty company gives me a $1,500 limit before I even drive up, which is really nice. So I can just fix it as long as it's covered under warranty and just bill out. Anything over that, I've got to call in. All right, um, come on, it's not, there we go, test cool, stage one, stage two, let's do stage two, test, yes, all right, here we go. Pressures are going up, they're still not high enough. I'm at 35 degrees. <clears throat> I'm gonna watch it for a second. We are gradually getting a little bit higher. 38 degrees, eight and a half degrees subcooling. Excuse me, eight and a half degrees, nine degrees superheat, three degrees subcooling. Test mode just stopped. All right, I'm gonna show you how you get to this technician access. You go to menu. Come on. Come on. And service right here. And then, oh, you just click on service. I'm sorry, you just click on service and you hold this technician access for 10 seconds. And then it asks you if you want to proceed. Proceed. Test mode right there. So this is the comfort link. Hmm. I'd have to pull it off the wall to tell you. Well guys, I don't come across one of those um, 
comfort link, comfort link systems very often. It seems like I have to relearn how to get access every time. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you did. And I'm going to catch you on the next one.